First, I'll talk about his physical. So, someone has um, Lewy body dementia, and what if there's a sudden change in function? Maybe that you're wondering, is this a fluctuation, or is there something really wrong? Someone had mentioned a seizure disorder. If the patient suddenly loses consciousness, is that normal, part of the disease, or is he having a seizure? It's very important to first assess for physical causes, because there may be something treatable. Now, it may not cure the disease itself, but it may bring the person to a higher level. It may help some, some symptoms. I want to just tell you a story about um, somebody I met once. When I was in Rochester, we used to go to the nursing homes to try to help um, the uh, uh, staff and, and family members cope with certain challenges they faced. And that's where I met a man named Frank. And Frank was an 82-year-old farmer who was very, very dedicated. This is up in Minnesota. He's worked as a farmer for his entire life. And he developed a dementia. He was an easygoing kind of guy. He kind of had a little Parkinson's, so he liked to hold a broom and kind of walked around kind of cleaning up. And he, it was sort of like his cane, but, you know, he really felt like he was uh, contributing, and he, he really was a very kind person. And one day he started to get very agitated, very angry. He, in fact, when the uh, staff was trying to help him change, he slugged one of them. Very unusual, but the staff just assumed and the family just assumed, well, you know, well, he's a getting into the violent stage of his dementia now. I guess this is the next stage. And they just sort of let it go. But it got worse and worse, and to the point where, you know, he just couldn't, they couldn't do anything with him. He wouldn't accept any help, and they called us at the Mayo Clinic to see if we had any suggestions. So we went in. We were a multidisciplinary team, and we went in. One of our uh, people was a, a geriatrician, a physician. And he did his exam, and he said, well, if, uh, Frank has a broken finger. And every time the staff tried to change him, they'd bang it or hit it, and he just wasn't able to tell anybody. So imagine the pain he must have been in from this broken finger for months. So it was not a typical stage of dementia. It was, in fact, an injury that nobody witnessed. No one knew. He wasn't able to tell anybody. And in fact, once it was splinted and he got some pain medicine, he was back to his normal self and pushing his broom and quite, you know, content. So I think it's, this story was a real learning experience for me. I think it really is important, even if you didn't see the fall. I think you always have to consider, could he have fallen? Is anything broken? Is he um, constipated? Does he have... Um, is he sick? Is there a bladder infection that I don't know about? Could he be dehydrated? You know, these are physical, medical conditions that can affect a person's abilities and can make their disease look a lot worse than it needs to be. Alcohol use, I would encourage severe curbing, if not no alcohol altogether. I mean, it's basically a drug and it can make symptoms worse. Certain medications also can make some symptoms worse. Um, I included exercise, but more on the positive side. Exercise is something that can actually improve uh, a person's um, uh, well-being and can not only boost their mood, but can also uh, provide some, some physical benefits. And so it can actually alleviate some um, boredom or restlessness can be a very helpful thing. Sleep disturbance is another uh, factor. Uh, if someone has a, a tendency to stop breathing while they're sleeping, you know, if they snore and do that, that might be sleep apnea. And perhaps if we could treat it, we might be able to improve their day-to-day -day functioning. And Dr. Barnea described depression and anxiety, and, and those are very important to treat as well. Environmental changes. Um, Environmental uh, changes, what I'm talking about, is noise in the room, um, clutter. I had a lady at my caregiver group the other day tell me, I don't know why, but my husband closes his eyes at breakfast all the time. It's really odd. He can't, you know, find the spoon because his eyes are closed. And I say, honey, open your eyes. And he just doesn't. So I asked her, well, you know, are you, is your table in an area where the sun shines in? Or do you have a very bright light? She says, oh, my goodness, I never thought of that. I do. We have a very bright light over our kitchen table. So she went ahead and put a dimmer switch, and now he opens his eyes at breakfast. So environmental changes can be um, uh, very helpful. 
in a, in a uh, book uh, called Hughes Hannibal Shanks. If you have a chance to read it, it's outstanding. I recommend it highly. It's a memoir by uh, his wife, Leela Knox Shanks. And she describes a situation where her husband was urinating in the closet. And it was such a problem because it was, you know, honey, the, the, the bathroom's over here. Just go this way. But he would find the closet, thought it was the bathroom, and, you know, she had a mess. And so what she did was she actually boarded up the closet, turned a light on in the bathroom, and he found the bathroom. But then what happened was he couldn't distinguish the toilet from the floor because everything was white. And so she, again, would have another mess. And so then what she did was she bought a very dark um, uh, bath um, rug, and that helped for a while. That really did. It was sort of able to, he could aim a little better. <laughs> At least it would, you know, be in the same, uh, the proper vic uh, vicinity, so to speak. So here's an example of how she modified her environment to try to help a, a problem. Um, you know, we could treat them with, you know, this drug or that drug, but, you know, sometimes just modifying the environment can be a, a, a simple solution.